welcome to another edition of Exotic Gardening UK, your host Chris Weekly. Well, the amazing spring-like weather continues. We've had really warm temperatures all last week. We've had a high over 17 degrees in the garden and it's been regularly over 13, 14 degrees each day. And the nights have been pretty fine, apart from one night to go to sub-zero, but it's been exceptionally really mild for this time of year, almost pretty much double the average temperature for mid-February. And it looks like the temperatures are going to continue to be really nice throughout the next week or so. So we should see 14, 15, 16 degrees each day for the next week ahead, looking at the weather forecast, which is pretty amazing for this time of year. And it means it gives plants that have had some cold weather time to sort of perk up and start thinking about growing. And it also means a lot of plants are starting to grow earlier than normal. So the tetrapanax buds are starting to stir. The musabaju, protected and unprotected, are showing some growth and are nice and green at the start of the new leaves. Also means the weeds are growing as well. There's quite a few areas in the garden that need a lot of weeding because they've been growing. Now the soil itself, obviously it's February, so it's, it's warmed up a bit, but it's still pretty cold. It's still too early for planting anything out or anything like that. And you've got to remember, it's still February. And last year we had the beast from the east which came at the start of March. So you could still see the return of very cold weather in March and heavy frost still well into April. But I'm cautiously optimistic that the worst of the weather's behind us and can start thinking about planning for, for the season ahead. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at areas of the garden that I've not really done much with over the last few years since I had this garden and looking at the plans for this year going to be looking at some plants that might need moving because of where they've been planted and uh, competing with other plants and we're going to be doing lots of other jobs in the garden. Now just around me where I am at the end of the garden we've got the tree ferns and they've, amazingly they've all kept their green fronds, their leaves are completely green undamaged by frost and other plants like the melianthus and some of the tender, the palms have kept completely green, which is fantastic to see. And it's pretty unexpected, really, because we did get minus 5.8, so it did get very cold in a few days sub-zero. But the cold was slow to, to rise the next day, the temperatures, so they didn't get sort of warm temperatures after cold temperatures, which meant the leaves didn't go from sub-zero, brittle and frosty, to, to warm up, so it, they didn't blacken off. And we didn't get those radiation frosts where they basically surface of the leaves freeze really quickly and then sort of blacken. That's not happened at all this year. So everything looks, fingers crossed, like it's come through unscathed. Now the area behind the jungle hut, between that and the fence, is a problem area that I've not dealt with. I need to think about what I'm going to grow in this area. So let's have a closer look. So in this area, it's only about 40 centimetres wide. And although you can see there's some topsoil, that's topsoil that I've put on this area to raise it because literally only 10 centimetres down, if that, it's pure clay from where I dug out the pond. So it's not the best conditions for growing most plants. And also in winter, when there's been a lot of rainfall, the overflow from the pond comes down here and water runs through this area before it gets to the main part of the garden. And it does get a bit of sun and it does get some shade depending on the time of day, so it's sort of partial shade conditions. So I need to find a plant that I can grow in here that will look good when you're sitting in the jungle hut and ideally block out the view of this fence. So I'm thinking about putting either a climber in this area that'll cover the fence and sort of some sort of plants that'll get to maybe a meter high so get up to up to this barrier here just to give a nice foil, a nice background 
left when he's sitting in this area, so it can't be anything spiky. It has to be soft leaves, quite robust, and can deal with the heavy clay soils underneath. So that is one of the challenges I face this year to plant up this area. Another problem area I have in the garden is the area beyond the bridge coming into the main part of the garden with the jabea. It's either side where I've raised the level by using all the topsoil from where the pond was dug and it's just basically covered in weeds. Obviously I'll weed these out but they keep coming back. It's very lots of weeds in this area. I planted the princeps palm, planted a yucca on the slope down there and we also have another trachycarpus palm here and the only plant surviving from the original garden which is this nice yucca which is tough as old boots but this area around as you can see doesn't look very nice it's had Monsette bananas in and some sort of annuals in previous years but I really need to give it some sort of structure dig over this guy out the weeds and plant some really interesting plants that cover this area that gets pretty much full sun all day and as we go around we've got the area as well where the electricity is for the pond here and this bamboo so we need to plant something in this area as well just to screen that area off and then if we go to the other side similar sort of situation planted a few palms in this area so you've got this lovely Boutier cateriensis here we've got the very wobbly Trachycarpus windsand that we looked at last week by the fence we've got a princeps hybrid there's a nice polycarp and a fern there and we have the chemrops arborescence down there so they will you know when they get bigger will cover large parts of this area but for now I need something just to cover sort of ground cover in this area between those major plants so in previous years I've had the annuals here and again the onsetes I need to think about some sort of lower growing plants for this area this year. Now here's a plant that I need to dig up and move and that's this Formium cream wave or yellow wave. It survived the very bad winter at my previous garden in 2010. It looked almost dead but it survived so it's a very hardy plant. Planted it here, it's got a bit of shade, a bit of sun but it's sort of fighting for space now underneath the jabea. It's got the Trachycarpus gilcrohensis on one side and this gorgeous princeps. It's getting nice and sturdy now. So it's get, that's getting a bit squashed. So I'm gonna dig this up and plant that somewhere else in the garden. And I also need to think about this princeps because it's starting to get into a beautiful sized palm nice sturdy trunk now it's been extremely slow growing as you can see it's got a decent start of a decent trunk these wonderful white leaves underneath and a green on top but it's taken over the path here so it means you have to step into the gravel so I need to really think about perhaps either cutting the leaves off on this side or digging it up and planting it elsewhere in the garden and another area of the garden that I need to plan out what I'm going to do for is the area down the far left side which has the gunnery tinctoria in and also where the petasites was that we managed to get rid of off the last two years so it's pretty much a clean bed in this area it's about two and a half, three metres by about 80 centimetres a metre wide so this is an area that I need to plant up with some striking plants this year as well. It's good soil, all new topsoil, and it's pretty free drained, but then it's nice and moist underneath, so plants should thrive in this area once established. Just need to pick the plants. Now a lot of people have been wondering about whether or not to water the Ancete bananas and get them into growth. Well, the weather has been warm and obviously it gets very warm in the greenhouse, about 25 degrees in the daytime. So I have been trying to open the doors to cool it down a little bit, because I don't want things to really romp away now and then get a cold spell and then be set back. But the weather forecast looks so good for the next week or so, 
that these onsets, they're in pots, I will give them a little water now. Not much, just a little bit. I'm only giving though water to the onsets that are in pots and have rooted. So if we just go over to one, just to check if it's rooted, uh, this one here, if I just pick it up by the plant, the whole pot comes up, so it's all rooted in there, it's, it's all holding it together. So I'll give these, I'll just try that one, yeah, these have all rooted for last winter and over this last few weeks, because it has been kept at 9 degrees in the greenhouse. So it looks like they've, they're in active growth now, look, you've got the leaves that are growing already. They're well rooted, so we'll give them a little bit of water because I know it's it's warm, it's going to be warm for the next week or so. And I know that I keep it at minimum 9 degrees, so they're fine to go. What I won't be watering are the ones that are not potted up, so the Morelli eyes here. They don't look very happy at the moment. Look, they're just sat on the ground. No compost, no soil, no potting mixture. But they are alive. If we look up in the middle, we can see the growth there. So it's starting to slowly move, but obviously I'm not going to water those yet because I've not potted them up. And I won't pot them up probably well into March, mainly because I don't have the space in here and it could still get cold and they're not rooted. So the onsetes will be left unpotted for a few weeks. The onsetes in pots that have got roots, I will give them a small watering and keep it nice and warm in the greenhouse. Moving over to the aeoniums, they've been sat there with no water all over winter, and as you can see, they look pretty healthy. We've got the ones that I've just shoved as cuttings in pots around the onsetes that have had no water, they look really good. The ones here, just in trays, they look fine. Although some have been attacked by caterpillars, hopefully not vine weevil. I think the caterpillars, yeah, there's some caterpillar droppings on there, so they've been hit a bit. But they will be brought out of the greenhouse as soon as possible. Because, and heat the space, because I only have one small greenhouse, I've got lots and lots of seeds to start growing and sowing. So I'll need all this space. So all the aeoniums will be out by April. They can cope with the odd frost outside, as we've seen from the ones that have left out over winter. So they'll be fine and get growing really well, sort of in April and May time. Which will leave me lots of space in the greenhouse to grow lots of seedlings for the summer borders. Other things in the greenhouse include these irisene cuttings that obviously have grown really well. This propagator is kept at above 20 degrees and they've grown nicely and they actually will probably need potting on soon which I'm reluctant to do because it means more space so I might have to bring more of these into the house into into pots and then use a propagator for starting off all my other seedlings because as you can see along with some of the little, uh, little caucasias here there's not much space in there so we'll need to empty this out soon so it's all about management of the space when you only have a small greenhouse and propagator now in my hand looks like a bit of rubbish, but it's actually one of the colocasia that I dug up last autumn. This was mammoth, which I could have left in the ground, it probably will have come back, but I want to start it off now into growth. So I've done that in a previous video showing you how to do that, basically clean off all this rubbish. If there's any rock, clean off that, and then put this into a plastic bag give a little brief in, brief, brief in it and then just put it into a warm place. It can be in the house, on a window sill, in an airing cupboard or in the propagator and then it should start shooting very quickly and that can be potted up and ready to go out in the garden in about May time. Another job that I've got on with this week is making sure the raised beds for the vegetables are ready. So I've prepared these, I've weeded them all, I've topped them up with some more topsoil and they're ready to plant in a couple of months time. We have runner beans, sweet corn etc. So that's ready to go. Now one thing over winter that happens in ground which is not covered, like 
this large bed here is that obviously the rain and the ice will mean the soil will be sort of moved about and compact a little bit and this was all new bed remember all this area here this was all lawn this time last year we've put this walkway in the middle and we've raised the soil with lots of nice good quality topsoil and that was successful the first summer but now over winter it has settled quite a lot and the air's gone out of it in bits which wasn't compacted last year so over the last week or so I've added lots, another ton of topsoil over the top of this area just to raise the levels a bit and add some more nutrients into the ground so that is almost ready to go for planting in spring the other thing that I will add to this area is lots more compost and manure, organic material and then I'll mulch over the top of that once I've planted out everything in well late spring for the summer bedding now with the mild weather we've been having it's really really important to make sure the tree ferns are getting watered obviously if it's rained a lot then fine they won't need watering but we've not actually had much rain we've just had really mild beautiful days so I'm just watering it from the top into the crown here I'm using water from the water butt which is ideal rather than tap water but obviously in summer I will use tap water because it's a lot easier and if you notice I'm giving it a good soak all the way around the top of the crown, in the crown, down the sides and I'll do that with all the tree ferns because they need a good soak from time to time because this weather it's amazing how quickly these dry out and they do want to be kept moist if possible all the time one of the issues with this mild weather so early on is the fact that the tree ferns might start growing and unfurling the new leaves and you don't want that to happen early because if they do that too early the new croziers, the new leaves that are coming out they're really vulnerable to even the slightest hint of frost and could be blackened off and killed before they've even unfurled I've had a look in a few of my tree ferns and I can see all the new croziers tightly packed in the middle, the new ones but thankfully none of them have come out yet. I do have straw at hand, most of these have still got the straw in. Just remove that just to give it a good water and I'll put the straw back in afterwards. And we don't want, like I said, the croziers to come out too early. Fingers crossed that they don't, or at least we don't get late frost. But if we do, it will blacken off quite a lot of the new croziers. But don't worry if that does happen, there's plenty of time in spring and summer for new leaves, new croziers to develop and to unfurl later on in the year. And thankfully, as we've already looked at the other ones, they're still all green from last year, which is fantastic. So it should mean more energy to grow bigger flush of leaves this year. Well, thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Gardening UK. You watch Chris Weekly. As you can see, I've set myself a lot of jobs to get done, a lot of problem areas to solve. So I've got a lot of jobs to do this week and in the future weeks. So join me again next week where I'll be doing more in the garden.